Right now, Polestar is what's well, kind of an orphan brand. They only have one electric car. However, this new EV they've just unveiled, it's going to change that. And it's going to make a Porsche Taycan look kind of average. Crazy. Hello my friends and welcome to the channel. As you can see, I'm pretty excited. This new EV from Polestar. Well, this is one of the reasons that I love doing this job, bringing you this news because boy oh boy, electric cars, they just keep on up in the ante. This is one of the reasons why I've been saying for a few years now, privately, I haven't said this on the channel, I'm gonna tell you this for the first time. I don't think companies like Porsche, I think they're gonna have a hard time maintaining their brand perception. Because, I mean, realistically, when you have cars like this come along for, say, a quarter of the price or, you know, no more than a third of the price, which have more power, probably look better on the inside and the out. I mean, what real advantage do you have in paying three times more for a Porsche vehicle when really it's just a brand? It's what else are you getting for that extra money? I mean, marketing, heritage, but other than that, Anything tangible and real, I don't think there's a lot in it. I mean, look at this car. It looks amazing. Now, if we actually look at the specs of it as well, well, yeah, 871 horsepower, 664 pound-feet of torque. So that's 650 kilowatt, right? Dual motor powertrain with 103 kilowatt battery, 800 volt charging, charging to 80% state of charge in 20 minutes. I mean, what more can I say? Now, Polestar's new four-door Grand Tourer. It's going to have 650 kilowatt, 900 newton meters of torque from its dual motor powertrain. That's an increase of 90 kilowatt on the most powerful Porsche Taycan, the Taycan Turbo S. Now, like the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6, the Polestar 5 will have an 800 volt architecture to allow for lightning quick charge times plugged into a DC rapid charger. Now, Polestar is saying that it's going to have class-leading dynamics, rigidity, and safety features, and part of that will be thanks to its bonded aluminium chassis, which will make it a lot lighter than other vehicles which are similar. Now, apparently, it's going to come after the Polestar 2, which is already on sale, the Polestar 3 SUV, which we revealed this year, and the smaller Polestar 4 SUV, which is due in 2023. So Polestar, they are going to have a lineup of quite a number of different cars there. That's going to be four different models in the range within the next probably 18 months. So Polestar says, right, that the new bonded aluminium chassis will be more rigid than current two-door sports cars or supercars. In addition, it says that its body in white will weigh less than that of vehicles in smaller segments. Here's what they said. Combining strong electric motor engineering ability with advances in lightweight platform technology is leading to truly stunning driver's cars, said Jorg Brandschild, Polestar Head of Research and Development. Keeping weight down is a constant battle in all cars, but it's more pronounced in electric vehicles. Vehicle weight is the enemy of range, and lithium-ion batteries are incredibly heavy, so making the rest of the car light is key. Now, the good news is that Pulsar are already saying that the production techniques they're going to use on this car are going to flow down to their cheaper cars, right? Bonded aluminium structures have traditionally been reserved for low volume, expensive sports cars. But Pulsar claims its new manufacturing process is faster and more mass production friendly than more traditional methods. Like other Pulsar vehicles, the five will be made in China and sold throughout the world. So for those of you, there's a lot of people claiming online that Polestar is a Swedish brand. I'll just read that again for you because you're not listening. I've been saying this for months and months. The Polestar 5 will be made in China and sold throughout the world. So yes, of course, there's definitely input from Swedish designers and engineers and no doubt there's definitely a workforce of Swedish people, but the vehicle is manufactured in China by largely the Chinese. So it's owned as well by Geely. So I think it's fair to say that that makes it a Chinese car company, seeing as it's owned by China. Anyway, the Polestar name has come a long way since the motorsports firm began collaborating with Volvo in 1995. In 2013, the company started tuning Volvos for improved performance. I know a few people who have Volvo Polestar, so like a Volvo tuned by Polestar. 
And yeah, they were pretty nice cars. Now what happened was Polestar's tuning arm was purchased in 2014 with the motorsports division spun off to become Cyan Racing. In 2017, Polestar became its own standalone brand and was tasked with being Geely's lead marquee for EVs. The brand is currently gearing up to formalize its pairing with special purpose acquisition company, which is a SPAC or SPAC, Gores Guggenheim, in a move expected to raise US 850 million or 1.2 billion Australian dollars. This raise will assist brand founded by Volvo and Zhejiang Geely Holding Group with its aggressive growing plans. And those growing plans will comprise one model launch per year. I like this, right? I like it when companies are realistic. It's not like General Motors, <laughs> Volkswagen. We're going to have 150 new EVs in three years. I mean, I'm exaggerating, you know, but come on. They've made ridiculous promises, which they haven't followed through on. No one seems to be holding them to account for that. I find that strange. But I like it that they're being realistic. They're saying one new model launch per year. That to me is within the realms of reality, within the realms of being logical and also being very smart about it because having 57 new EVs within three years, imagine the number of parts you need, the number of production lines, the number of new employees, learning new new ways of doing things, the number of new robots. It's very, very complicated. And I think the solution here, in my view, is to go the Tesla route, which is have less models and sell more of those models. Therefore, increasing margins. And I think that's what Volvo and Geely are planning on doing. Polestar's common stock will begin trading on the NASDAQ from June the 24th under the new ticker symbol PSNY. Polestar is expected to boost sales annually to 290,000 by 2025, up from 29,000 in 2021 and hopes to break even in 2023. Good goals. I like it. They're realistic goals. 300,000 EVs in 2025. I think it's much more realistic that Polestar will get, achieve this. In fact, I'd bet on they will achieve that versus companies like um, you know, General Motors and Ford who are saying they're going to be making millions of EVs within a couple of years, but no one really knows how that's going to come about. Don't get me wrong. I do like their ambitions. We want more EVs fast, but I think making realistic promises is important as well. Now let's get down to it. The looks. On the inside, to me, this looks fantastic. On the outside, it looks fantastic. The performance specifications are really good. Clearly, the manufacturing techniques they're looking to employ for this car will be really good. They haven't said whether they're, using, whether they're using structural battery packs. I think companies will need to step up their game and start using structural battery packs. That's what's happening in China now, not just from Tesla. Lots of manufacturers are doing it or planning on doing it. It's a definite advantage. So whether or not this car has it, I don't know. We'll find out soon. However, I'm saying right now, I'm excited by these numbers, these specs, and realistically, we're going to have a lot of choice, some very impressive cars at prices that, well, not everyone can afford, but a lot of people will be able to afford. I mean, how many people can afford a Porsche Taycan? Probably like 1% of the population. Yeah, different story for these EVs coming from Polestar and, of course, being made in China. Now, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Please don't try and tell me Polestar is a Swedish brand. I'm sick of reading that. It's just stupid. <laughs> I know most of you are aware that that's not the case, but there's still people saying this everywhere and it's kind of getting tiring. Please let your friends know. It's owned by Geely. They're made in China, and that's the end of the story. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.